What if your ship entered shallow waters and the alarms never warned you? That's why mastering Ectus isn't just important. It's essential for safe navigation. Welcome back, everyone. In part one, we explored the basics of Ectus. In part two, we unlocked its key features and safety functions. Don't forget to watch the previous video. Link in the description and in the I button above. And now, in this final part of our three-part series, we're going hands-on. You'll learn how to update your charts, how to carry out passage planning step-by-step, step, how to order charts for your voyage, and also discover advanced tools like dual fuel mode, limiting danger lines, Ectis's backup options, and the Admiralty information overlay. By the end of this session, you'll not only understand how Ectis works, you'll know how to use it like a professional navigator. So let's dive in and complete this journey together. Let's begin with how to update charts in Ectis. Updating charts is one of the most critical tasks in ensuring navigational safety. Ectis charts come in different forms. Base ENC, the permanent data supplied initially. ENC updates, weekly or periodic corrections, similar to notices to mariners. Temporary and preliminary notices, shown as information layers. Manual updates, entered by the navigator for local warnings or temporary obstructions. Now, when it comes to methods of updating, you can do it online, through satellite or internet. You can do it offline, using CDs, DVDs, or USBs from providers like UKHO, Primar, or Navtor. Or you can set it up for automatic updating if your system is subscribed to an integrated service. The process itself is simple. Insert your update media or connect to the server. Select Update and Install Updates. The system checks licenses, applies corrections, and generates a report. Always verify updates by checking the Ectus status and cross-referencing with weekly notices to mariners. Now we will see our next topic, passage planning in Ectus. Passage planning follows the same four stages recommended by IMO, but Ectus makes them smarter and safer. First comes appraisal. Here we gather voyage requirements ENC coverage, weather, tides, navigational warnings, traffic schemes, and vessel particulars like draft and UKC. This helps us identify no-go areas early. The second stage is planning. We plot the route with waypoints and courses. We apply safety settings such as safety depth, safety contour, shallow and deep contours, and look ahead. Always use the largest scale ENC available and run a route check. Ectus will highlight dangers, include wheel over points, parallel indexing, contingency anchorages, and abort points. The third stage is execution. Load the final route into the active Ectus. Confirm backup arrangements. Monitor continuously. Cross-check position using radar overlays or visual bearings, while applying bridge team management principles. Finally, monitoring. During the voyage, the ship must remain within the safety corridor. Ectus will generate alarms for deviations or approaching dangers. But remember, it is always the navigator's duty to verify ENC accuracy, check sensor inputs, and keep a proper log. Our next topic is how to order charts for Ectis. The process is straightforward. Enter your voyage route into the chart management software. The system highlights all the charts covering your route, categorized by scale from berthing to harbor, coastal, general, and overview. Select the required charts, add them to your basket, 
and generate an order file. Send this file to the chart provider by email or through the company's system. In return, you receive permits, which are then imported into the ECDIS. Finally, apply corrections to ensure your charts are fully up to date. Let's see the next feature, dual fuel mode. Normally, ECDIS operates with ENC's vector charts, but in areas where ENC coverage is not available, the system can switch to raster navigational charts, scanned paper charts. This is called dual fuel mode. But here's the important point. If a vessel is operating in dual fuel mode, it must also carry a full set of paper charts as backup. Now we will see limiting danger lines in ECDIS. The limiting danger line is a user-drawn line, separating safe waters from unsafe waters. It is calculated based on the vessel's draft and under keel clearance. Crossing this line means the ship is entering a danger zone. It acts as a clear no-go boundary for navigation. Our next topic is ECDIS backup options. To comply with IMO requirements, every vessel must have a reliable backup in case the primary ECDIS fails. There are three options. The first is having a second fully independent ECDIS system. The second option is carrying a full set of up-to-date paper charts. And in some cases, vessels carry both for added redundancy. Now let's move to ECDIS display modes there are three levels of display in ECDIS. The first is the base display, showing essential information that cannot be turned off. Coastline, hazards, depth contours, restricted areas, aids to navigation, landmarks, and the ship's position. The second is the standard display, the default for routine safe navigation. It adds details like soundings, submarine cables, wrecks, buoys, and other navigational aids. The third is display on request, optional layers that can be enabled when needed, such as isolated dangers, anchorages, cables, pipelines, and other supporting notes. Finally, let's see the Admiralty Information Overlay, or AIO. This is a worldwide digital data layer displayed over ENCs in ECDES. It provides additional information during passage planning. The AIO is refreshed every week as part of the Admiralty Vector Chart Service updates. It can be received on disk or by download. On ECDES, the AIO is shown as red polygon shapes, which correspond to temporary and preliminary corrections. It highlights areas where differences between ENCs and paper charts may affect the passage plan. And with that, we've reached the end of our three-part ECDES series. In this final part, we explored the practical skills every navigator must master. ECDES has transformed modern navigation. But remember, it is only as reliable as the navigator using it. Always keep your knowledge sharp cross-check information, and never rely on a single source. If you found this helpful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more maritime learning content. Thank you for staying with me through this entire series. Safe sailing, and see you in the next series.